So, now we move on to the knee, ok. We have looked at, we have been coming down the skeletal system and we looked at the loading at the hip. Now, we will look at, because there are a lot of activities where the knee has to be stabilized by the muscular forces and the joint forces can also get uh, to be pretty high at the knee. And um, activities can result in pain in the knee, there can be you know destabilization, there could be uh, um, uh, and we will see how to do simple analysis to kind of determine the loads at the knee during different. Uh. So, if you look at the knee, structure of the knee, you all remember that it is a, what kind of a joint is it? It is also a condyloid joint. it is basically a modified hinge joint. For the most part you have flexion extension is the major movement, you also have some internal external rotation, but predominantly you have uh, the movements that are possible are flexion and extension. There is some inward outward rotation. So, it is one of, it is the largest joint in the body in terms of size, it is um, the knee is a large uh, joint and the muscles that are responsible for controlling the movement about the knee. On the anterior side, you have the, you have the quadriceps, you have the quadriceps muscles. So, you have four muscles that come into one tendon basically the quadriceps tendon and then there is also a small bone the sesamoid bone called the patella which is located inside the uh, inside this tendon and then on the other side you have the the patellar tendon follows through to attach to the tibia and that portion is called the patellar ligament because it is essentially attaching the patella to the tibia ok. So, the, this patella kind of acts like a pulley over which this tendon um, moves. So, you have the um, various ligaments that stabilize the motion at the knee. So, you can see the knee is basically like you know you have something <coughs> like this ok and you have to control the motion, it is not like your regular hinge joint. So, you have ligaments such as the medial and sorry lateral and medial collateral ligaments, these are the ligaments at the side and then you have the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. So, the ligaments are very important for limiting the motion at the joint, especially the motion in the frontal plane ok. So, a sign of uh, a joint where you know if you have a knee joint where the ligaments are damaged then you will have too much movement, it is called joint laxity. So, when you try to passively move the joint, so actively you do not have abduction adduction at the knee, but if your ligaments are loose then you can passively move the joint and that is how they test the health of the joint. If somebody has an injury, they will know that uh, there is joint laxity uh, and that is caused by some damage to the ligaments. Again, it is a synovial joint, you have, uh, you also have some shock absorbing menisci, you know which is all cartilage between the uh, uh, condyles of the uh, femur and the tibia ok to cushion the loads that are taken by the knee. And the joints also have the uh, uh, lining of articular cartilage just like all synovial joints do. There is a joint capsule, this synovial fluid inside the capsule uh, etcetera ok. So, the knee basically the joint between the tibia and the femur 
okay, the fibula does not have a part in the knee joint. The fibula is a bone that is attached to the tibia, but it is not part of the knee joint. When you talk about the knee joint, there are two joints that we talk about at the knee. One is the tibiofemoral joint, so that is the main joint, the hinge joint and the other joint that you talk about is the joint between the what are the two bones are in contact at the knee. You have the patello femoral joint. So, there is a groove in the femur and as your knee flexes and extends, the patella moves inside that groove. Your knee cap, you can feel it move as you bend your knee. It moves on the femur, in the groove on the femur. So, there are two, um, so this, this is really the hinge joint and that joint is the knee cap that we talk about. So, if you look at the muscles, you have the quadriceps, you have the um, rectus femoris, four muscles make up the quadriceps, then you have the vastus, you have the media uh, sorry this would be the lateralis this would be the medialis and underneath is your intermedius so these four muscles are essentially your knee extensors the quadriceps muscles are the only knee extensors and they are a very important group of muscles for that reason because you have this articulated system that needs to be stabilized as you are applying loads to it and these muscles are very important play a very important part in the stabilization of the knee. On the posterior side you have the what muscles do you have? you have the hamstrings group okay and you have this would be your biceps femoris and the semi tendinosus and semi membranosus i think this is the semi tendinosus The blue is the semi tendinosis and the green is the semi membranosis. So, these muscles are bi articular muscles. So, they connect to the pelvis okay the hamstrings so the long head of the biceps femoris the semi tendinosus and the semi membranosus actually connect to the pelvis so they are crossing both the knee as well as the hip joint so they are the biarticular muscles and we saw in the case of biarticular muscles you have active and passive insufficiency so when you have, uh, when they are at their extremes, okay, they may not be able to perform their function because they are then functioning at the short end of the muscle length or at the long end of the muscle length, not at their normal uh, length when they are most effective. So, these are a group of muscles they exhibit. If your knee is extended, for instance, Okay. If the knee is extended, okay, then what will happen? Um, if you try to, let us see, knee, knee is extended, if you try to hip flexion, 
if you try to do hip flexion you are limited yeah the hamstrings will be will resist that. So, that is an example of passive insufficiency okay, when the knee is uh, extended. So, let us see and similarly if the hip is flexed your ability to extend the knee becomes limited same uh, the other side of the coin. So, for strengthening the quadriceps typically you are given knee strengthening exercises okay, and those are essentially quadriceps strengthening exercises. So, that would be a case where you can do a static analysis at the knee. So, people typically wear some kind of a weight boot okay, or they would have ankle weights and then you would do the extension and flexion to strengthen your quadriceps muscles. So, if you had to do an analysis of this um, uh, let us say to hold it at a certain position, then it is very similar to what we have done so far. So, if you take the uh, free body diagram, so let us uh, let me just state the problem. So, you have a person wearing ankle weights doing flexion extension exercises from a seated position. to strengthen the quadriceps muscle. So, if this is the weight at the weight of the boot or the ankle weights and so if I draw a free body diagram. So, this is my knee, this is my load, this is the weight of the lower leg. Okay. So, I will call it L leg of the shank. Okay. Then say this is my F m, k is the knee. So, I may have some force j instead of because I do not know the direction, I will represent it by its components. So, I will say I have a j axial and a j normal. Okay. F m I know where it acts. Okay. Let us say this is A, this is B and this is C. Let us say that the inclination of this leg at this particular instant is beta and F m acts at an angle theta to the tibia. Actually, I could call this well tibia would mean only the bone. So, I do not want to I will just call it weight of the lower leg L leg. Okay. So, again what are my unknowns? I have similar to your because I am assuming there is only one muscle which in uh, I am assuming there is no antagonistic muscle acting here which would be the hamstrings. Um, I am assuming only the quadriceps are acting on the tibia. I assume I know where the insertion is for the quadriceps. I, so, that is my A. I know that I know the direction of action 
of this muscle. The only thing I do not know is what is the magnitude of the muscle force. I know the external load that I am applying to the leg W L. From anthropometric data, I would also know the weight of the lower leg for uh, a person of a certain body weight. The other things I do not know are J A and J N. So, I have three unknowns, three equations I should be able to solve for the forces. So, I have let us say sigma m about this knee equal to 0, then I get f m sin theta into a minus w leg. If this is beta, then this angle is also beta, right. So, cos beta into b and minus w l into cos beta into c equal to 0. A equal to say 12 centimeters, B equal to 22 centimeters, C equal to 50 centimeters and I will give you W leg sorry L leg lower leg 150 Newtons and the load. So, it is like a 10 kg boot. So, about 100 Newtons and I get F m from that equation for these set of values theta is 15 degrees and beta is 45 degrees. What is F m? 1890 Newton. That is a large load, right. And then if you find for these same values, if you do sigma f x equal to 0, sigma f y equal to 0, you will find j a equal to 312.4 Newtons, j n equal to uh, minus 1648.8 Newtons. Therefore, J equal to square root of J A square plus J N square will give you, you get 1678 Newtons, the magnitude of the joint force. Okay. So, these are large loads at the knee. F m sin theta ok. Mm, no. So, so, this is j n, this is j m. So, your equation would be j n plus f m sin theta minus w l leg cos beta minus w l. So, here again this angle is beta cos beta correct and then j a minus f m cos theta sin beta sin beta equals 0. So, these are your other two equations. So, these give you this. So, the patella plays oh, um, an important role, I will just mention this. Um, so, if you look at the patella, so if you look at the muscle force, okay, 
because of the presence of this patella you are increasing that angle theta to the tibia at which this muscle force acts. Okay. This is F m because of the presence of the patella you have that pulley effect this is increasing this angle theta. Now, if you look at F m the F m sin theta is your rotational component okay, that is what is resisting the torque of the. Uh, so, if you have a small theta then F m has to be higher in order to. So, if suppose somebody has an injured patella and they remove it then that person has to exert much larger forces to maintain the knee at a certain, certain angle okay, because the rotational component now becomes smaller and instead the component that is compressing the joint is going to be higher because that is F m cos theta. So, the patella acts to increase this moment arm at the knee joint and so it gives you it gives this muscle force a mechanical advantage with respect to the rotation okay, and reduces the compressive force because that is F m cos theta. If the if the patella was not there then you would have this closer this distance d if patella is removed d reduces so making it less effective for the so so fm has to increase to compensate for so the person has to exert greater forces muscle forces and the joint forces correspondingly will also increase. Okay. So, that is the function of the patella it acts to improve the mechanical advantage at the okay. we will uh, stop here.